Naming amines using the preferred IUPAC naming system, which is recognised and preferred by UK exam boards for A-level chemistry, can be very tricky. And it's because there's often an older system lurking in the background in a lot of endorsed resources that can make you doubt the way you're naming your amine molecules. In this video, I'm going to give you all the guidance you need to be able to name amines with confidence, and actually you'll see that they're not that bad. Let's start with some primary amines at the top. Now the primary amines are the easiest to name and a primary amine is when I have the nitrogen atom directly bonded to two separate hydrogens and one alkyl group. And so that makes this a primary amine. And both of these are examples of primary amines. What we need to do is number the carbon chain that comes out of the nitrogen, like so, and you can see how this is reflected in the Molly Mod kit above, just like that. And our naming system is going to use the suffix of amine. So let me demonstrate. For this first one on the left, we've got a four carbon chain, so this is going to be butan. Now here, just like with alcohol functional groups, for example, I now need to use a locant number to indicate the position of the NH2 group. So this is going to be butan 1, because the NH2 group is on carbon number one in the chain. And so this is going to be butan one, suffix time, amine. And there we go. You can already therefore expect what the next one is going to be, making sure that we give the lowest number for the locant as possible. So this is going to be a two there, not a three, for where that NH2 group can be found. So it even requires me to number this one in the reverse order. And the name of this particular molecule using the preferred IUPAC system is going to be butan 2 amine. And there we are. The primary amines are not that bad to name. Where things get more complicated, though, is with the secondary and tertiary amines. So let's have a look at those next. All right, so here what I have is a secondary amine and a tertiary amine at the top of the screen. So my secondary amine is over here. And the reason this is a secondary amine is because the nitrogen is directly bonded to one hydrogen and two alkyl groups directly. And the reason that this one is a tertiary is because the nitrogen atom is directly bonded to three alkyl groups. The alkyl groups could all be the same, they could all be different, some could be the same compared to another that's different, it doesn't matter. It's about what they are, not what they look like. I will apologise a little bit here because I don't like using full skeletal when it comes to methyl groups because I think it makes the structures look a little ambiguous, in my opinion. So here you'll notice I've drawn out the CH3s. It's up to you. If the exam question just says draw the structure, it's very likely they'll allow you to use a combination of formulae as long as it is unambiguous. But if they say you must use strict skeletal formula, then you would need to show these CH3s in skeletal. But most exam questions these days don't insist on that, although there are a few sprinkled in there for good measure. So let's have a look at naming. So here, what I've got, which is a little different, is two separate alkyl chains. I've got a shorter chain and a longer chain. Now the shorter chain is going to get what I like to call the N-alkyl treatment. And so the shorter chain here is going to be this CH3 group. So this is going to be the N-alkyl group. The shorter chain gets chucked as a prefix at the front of the name. That's before the longer chain is even mentioned. The longer chain gets the same treatment as the primary amines further up the page. And so it's still going to get here the propanamine with a locant number chucked in. Let's have a look at the name. So I've got my carbon number one over here, and I've got a second carbon number one, and then carbons two and three down here. My shorter chain gets the N-alkyl treatment. So this is going to be N-methyl right at the front of the name. So let me highlight that so you can see exactly where that's come from. That's come from there. And then the rest of the name is as you would expect it to be based on those we looked at further up the page. So this is going to be propan one amine. And there we are. 
It's not wildly different, it's just got this N-methyl component to it. So why the N-methyl and does that N ever change? Not really, no. The N makes it clear that the methyl group isn't on, say, carbon number two of the other chain. It's not a regular alkyl group. The N makes it clear that it's directly bonded to the nitrogen. Let's do the same thing for the tertiary. Now for the tertiary, you'll notice here, I've got two methyl groups. Now, if these were different chain lengths, they would still get that N-alkyl treatment. I would just stack them in alphabetical order. So for example there, if I had an ethyl and a methyl, I would put the ethyl first. That's where it can be a little confusing because the whole point of these groups being now at the prefix is that they were shorter than one of the other chains that was directly connected to the nitrogen. But once they are at the front, once they're stacked at that prefix section, we've got to make sure they are listed alphabetically. Let's have a go at naming this one. Now, I'm going to start off, I want to give my N-alkyl treatment to these CH3s, but I've got two of them. Now, if I have two of a particular functional group in organic chemistry, if I had them both on, say, carbon number two, let's say I had two bromine groups on carbon number two in a long chain, then I would have to list it according to the IUPAC rules as 2 comma 2 dash dibromo and then the rest of the structure name. Here, we treat the N like a number. And so, just like I would do 2 comma 2, here I do N comma N and I do dimethyl to describe those two CH3s. Please note that the di, tri, and tetra do not contribute to the alphabetical listing. So let's just move this bit of the name over here and highlight up where I've got those two highlighted sections from there. Then I can name the rest of the molecule as normal, because here what I have now is a two carbon chain remaining, which is of course longer, therefore it goes here as the suffix. So this is going to be ethan. I'm going to put the low cant on. You could argue I don't need it, but I'm going to put it there. One amine. For consistency. So what happens when I have two primary amine groups on a carbon chain? Well, this one can look a little tricky at first, but actually, even though this is the last one we're going to look at, it's not that bad. Here, what we can see I have is a four carbon chain. So I've got the butan that I've used a few times. There we go. And you can see that I've got an NH2 group on carbon number one and an NH2 group on carbon number two. So if I number out my chain down here, remember to keep that low count number nice and low for the next stage of this, you can see I've got the NH2s on carbons one and two. So those are two separate primary amine groups. So that would be two lots of primary amines. So what about naming this? Well, here I'm gonna focus on the main chain and I'm gonna see these as just copied groups one on carbon number one, one on carbon number two, both of them are amines, let's not overcomplicate it because the naming system here is gonna be just like if I had two alcohol groups, for instance. So this is gonna be butane, we put the E back in, one, two, diamine. There you go. So don't forget, we always put that E back in whenever we have two of a suffix functional group. We do that for alcohols, we do it for carboxylic acids, so look out for that. But otherwise, I don't think here there was anything too complicated or too different than the very first examples we looked at at the top of the page. Just at least now you have a clear and consistent method that you can follow. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like before you go so that YouTube knows I still exist. Until next time though, happy revising.